What's up everyone? Welcome to the Happy Trails Outdoor Experience. My name is Ryan. That's Ashley and Trixie's right there behind her. And today is our first official day that we're out here for the year. I think the date is April 10th. I've been really, really itchy to get out here, but the weather has not been cooperating with me and my work schedule. So um, we're out here today trying to figure out what we can do. Uh, April, so we're looking for ramps, um, which are wild leeks, they're like an onion, um, other wild edibles, and we're scouting for some morel mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, and some of the other types of mushrooms that you can find growing this time of year. It's still a little early in my neck of the woods. Um, typically, we probably won't see really big flushes coming out until middle of April, uh, after we've got a couple of uh, weeks of really nice 60 degree to 70 degree weather. Um, I usually don't start looking, but I do start scouting rather early and I haven't been to this spot yet. So we're out here, we're gonna start looking around uh, for morels and leeks basically, but this is also a good spot for trout fishing. So I'm not gonna spend too much time looking around for things that I can eat off the ground today. I'm gonna focus more on trying to catch me some fish um, because I've also been itching to get out there and do some of that. Um, but with that being said, uh, we'll keep an eye out for, you know, it's also shed season, so the deer have lost their antlers. We're gonna start looking for those too. Um, anything else interesting out here, you know I'll always show you guys and tell you what I know about it. Um, they always say that the ticks are always bad. Always bad. And, uh, and and they are it's just the time of year every every spring they're bad and they're bad in the fall they're pretty dormant in uh you know december through middle of february but they start waking up this time of year and they're pretty bad sometimes i can find like 20 on me in one day so just keep a lookout for ticks when you're out here this time of year they they are hungry um what else i don't know guys it should be a good time so stick around and find out what we come across all right guys i'll be with you okay so here's a here's a good wild edible good plant all around for the survivalist uh this is a cattail and as you can see all that stuff that makes for good uh fire starters that fluff that comes out of there lots of it um the roots of a cattail is edible and cattails also have this uh sap that's if you if they're fresh this one's pretty dead this one's pretty dead but if you get a nice green cattail and you pull it out i don't know this one's not going to cooperate with me but they uh they excrete a type of a sap like kind of like an aloe plant would and it actually is like a lidocaine, a natural kind of lidocaine, uh, a little bit of a painkiller. So if you get stung or if you get a cut or if you fall down and scrape your knee or something, or if you have a toothache, you can rub that stuff in the wound or the affected area and it'll actually alleviate some of the pain. So that's good to know. Cattails are, cattails are good. So, all right guys, Trixie's over there hunting around and we're gonna go that way. Reason I picked this spot is because it's in direct sunlight. You can see this entire hillside is in direct sunlight. Right now it's about heading towards five o'clock. The sun's right there, still beating down. The sun probably rose somewhere over there. So this spot is in direct sunlight almost all day long. This is a prime spot for me looking for them early morels. So that's what we're out here doing. We're gonna go try to find some morels. Probably not gonna come up with anything this early in the year, but we're still gonna keep an eye out. Yes. All right, onward. Tree pooch! Tree pooch! What are you doing? <coughs> Go! All right, here's another good one. This little guy is called purple dead nettle. And this is a beloved plant among the foragers out here. And the reason why is because you can make this guy into a tea and it's anti-inflammatory, anti-fungal, antibacterial. This stuff has a, a lot of good medicinal properties to it. You can make it into a tincture or dry it out and make it into a tea. 
I don't know what it tastes like because I've never had it, but I know it's a good plant. So purple dead nettle, nice. And then right next to it over here, where'd it go? Ah, right here. I got some wild garlic mustard. And I do know that this one right here does taste like garlic mustard. So it's like, it does taste garlicky, garlicky. Um, don't know much about the plant as far as like nutritional value or anything like that goes, but I know you can eat it. So that's cool. All right. You can see Trixie's up there on the log. We're gonna find them. If they're out here, we'll find them. All right, so this is a cool find little deer skull I'll put that in my backpack and I'm taking it home with me figured I'd show you guys Trixie's still over there having the time of her life she's 13 now so she's still hopefully got a good couple years left on her but she's over there living her best life she don't act like she's old but she is all right she still has energy to burn All right, so I figured while I'm walking around, I would tell you guys what I know about morel hunting. Usually I do find ramps while I'm on my hunting for the morels. So ramps are really easy to spot. They have these green shoots that come out and they're, they stick out. They're like really, really hyper green. And so I don't keep an eye out for them. Morels are like an Easter egg hunt. They blend in with all the foliage on the ground so you gotta really look for them uh but typically with morels you're looking by water and hillsides that are in sunlight most of the time for the early morels uh the black morels come out first and then the yellow morels come out last. Uh, they like, they don't, they don't like to grow unless the temperature on the soil is right. So we're looking for soil temperatures between 50 and 60 degrees for these guys to start popping up. Uh, with that being said, once the soil reaches the right temperature, you can start looking for them. And they do come out up overnight. Um, when they start growing, they'll be about the size of your thumbnail. So good luck finding them. But they grow fast is the thing. Uh, you're looking for elm trees and poplar trees. She's up here with me. They prefer elm trees. And... Uh, and poplar trees and tell a poplar tree because they're usually the first ones to be sprouting in the spring you'll see a poplar and it'll stand out because it'll be up on the hillside all by itself it'll be the only one that has leaves coming out on it uh what else i've heard some people say that they have found morels around sycamore trees I can contest to that. I only found one batch of morels around a sycamore tree once years ago. So I don't think that they prefer it, but not impossible. I've also heard box elders. Um, if I see any of these trees, I'll let you know what they look like for identification purposes so you guys know what you're looking for. Uh... As far as that goes, it's about covering covering as much land as you can. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Um, what else is there with these guys? I like to keep an eye out for oyster mushrooms too when I'm doing this, because those are like one of my favorites. Wine cap mushrooms come up this time of year, which are kind of like a wild portabella. Um, what else? What else? What else? That's about it. I, other than that, though, I just try to cover as much land as I can and try to, you know, there's a word, it's called bioindicators. And, you know, I've noticed that I find a lot of uh, morels where there's, a, where, where there's mayapples growing. 
I never find any morels around any ferns. So if there's a lot of ferns in the area, I won't even look. Ferns, the thing about ferns is they take up a lot of the nutrition that's in the soil and they just grow, grow, grow. They just take over the entire area and then it makes it pretty hard for anything else to grow. Uh, so I try to stay away from anything with ferns. Try to stay away from rocky areas. Um, and I try to stay down low. That's where Ashley's at now. She's down by the creek and I'm kind of walking this hillside. So we can kind of spread out a little bit and cover more that way. I'm not having much luck yet. Doesn't mean they're not out yet, but if they are, they're probably really small. And I'll probably have to come back for them if I do find any, so. But I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm gonna get back to it. Like I said, after we're done scouting this area for mushrooms, we're gonna go fishing for some trout and hopefully we can go home with something today. But if anything else interesting happens out here in the great outdoors, I will let you all know. Go, here we go. It's not a morel, but it's something. Let's see here, oh, I lost it. There it is. It's called a scarlet elf cup. And this is an edible fungus. I've never had them before, but I'm gonna have them tonight. I'm taking this home. I'm not going home empty handed. So I'm taking home this here Scarlet Elf cup. There's another one over there. And that's the thing about mushrooms too. If you ever find a single morel, open your eyes because you might just end up stepping on another one without paying attention too much. There's another, it's a elf cup. And these guys are just now starting to, you can tell these guys are fresh. So I'm gonna take those home with us. There's another one. See, that's how it goes. Elf cup, scarlet elf cup. And I'm gonna find out what they taste like later today probably. Cool. All right, if I see anything else, stay tuned because more good stuff is coming. Another good tip when you're mushroom hunting, I try to use a mesh bag, uh, laundry bags, um, bags from like produce from the store, save those, take them with you. Reason why you want to use mesh bags is because as you're walking, these mushrooms are going to continue to, to drop their spores and they're going to... They're gonna colonize everywhere you walk. They're gonna be dropping spores. So when you come back next year, they'll be more spread out and you might find more of them. So it's always a good thing to, to practice uh, sustainable harvesting. You know, uh, always take a little bit, but not all of it. All right, guys. Come here, come on. What's up, pooch? How's that water? I'm sure it's nice and cold, huh? Look at this. That's pretty. Go! Do you see my trail? <laughs> <laughs> I slid, it was a calculated risk. It was a calculated risk. Yeah. Hey, quiet. I did that on purpose. You slid down the hill so you didn't have to fall down the hill. Yeah. Okay. What? Trix, hey, what are you doing? Eeky! All right, go, go! I used it like a slide. <laughs> you slid down the hill instead of falling down the hill. Yeah. Right, whatever works. All right, guys, so uh, earlier in the beginning of this video, 
I gave a little lecture about ticks. I live in southwestern Pennsylvania, and basically all of Pennsylvania is uh, pretty big for Lyme disease and pretty heavy with ticks. So, uh, especially this time of year. I know that everybody always says every year, ticks are bad this year. They're bad every year for a little while. They, they wake up in the spring, they're hungry, and they want fed. So, I just stopped. We always stop periodically um, to check ourselves for ticks. And I was just doing that. Ashley's down there doing that. She found one on her. Well, I found six on me. Yeah, all of those are ticks. So, it's just really, you gotta, you gotta pay attention. You gotta check yourself all the time. I'm gonna get rid of these guys. There's still another little straggler right there, a nymph. Uh, there's another one crawling up on me. All right, I'm good. I'm good. So, always check yourself. Periodically stop while you're in the woods this time of year, any time of year, really and check yourself. Check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. Um, and then when you get home, it's a good practice to throw your clothes that you were wearing for the day in the dryer. And always get some type of repellent or, I use Frontline for her, so I don't have to worry about her. Um, but yeah, anytime you're in the woods, guys, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you're good. So, ah, oh, see that right there? It's a walnut. I thought that was a morel for a second. But yeah, watch out for ticks out here, guys. Because if you're not healthy, then you're not going to be able to continue to do these sorts of things. So don't want to be getting Lyme's disease. None of that stuff. And if you do find a tick on you, get it off as soon as possible. The longer a tick is in you and feeding on your blood, the higher chance of uh, transmitting the disease is. So, even if a tick is carrying Lyme's disease, you might not trans trans uh, you know transmit it right away. Um, but it's all always precaution. You want to be proactive and reactive. So, keep all of that in mind out here. All right, guys. I officially have a line in the water. Don't know if I'm gonna get lucky or not. But we're gonna try. If I get a fish on, I turn on my camera as soon as I set the hook. But I'm gonna keep my camera off for the most part just to conserve battery. So, wish me luck there, guys. Hopefully I'll come home with something. All right, guys, I got, I got one. Fish on, fish on, I'm gonna walk him down. This isn't a trout, but he's a fish. I'll take it. I'll take it. Not a trout, but still fun. Oh, he's going, he, he's, he's running. All right, all right, here we go. Let's get him in. The bank over there was a little bit steep. Bring him in right here. First fish of the year for me. I'm not a I'm not a guy that goes out when it's cold, so let's get this guy in here. Got ourselves a carp. Not a trout, but still fun. I'll take it. Ah. Uh, Quit moving, buddy. There we go. Nice common carp. He's strong. All right, bud. Back in the water with you. All right. Not going home empty-handed on the mushrooms or the fish, so. Got a little bit of everything we were looking for out here today, but the day's still not over yet. I'm going for fish number two. All right, we're gonna go for fish number two now. See what we can do. Let's 
Just like it. Oh, that was a trout. That was definitely a trout. Okay, game on. I'll bait up again here real quick. That was most certainly, without a doubt in my mind, a trout. He hit it as soon as it hit the bottom. Hopefully he's still hungry. We all know trout can be a little skittish. He might hit it again, we'll see. I think he got it. Yep. He's nibbling. Got him. That's another carp. All right. Oh, he's under the log. He's under the log. All right. Over the log here, buddy. I'll walk him down just like I did with the other one. You can see he's not putting up a, as much of a fight as the other one did. I might be able to get this one without walking him all the way down. There we go. It's fish number two. That other one I had bite about two seconds ago. That was definitely a trout though. I saw him. So we're gonna keep trying. All right, I got fish number three on. It's another carp, but I'll take it. I don't know if I can... Oh, I hooked this guy right in the back. He's not even hooked in the mouth. That's why he felt bigger than, than he is. I don't know if I can lift him up out of the water. This is only six pound test. Yep, I got him. There we go. Look at the way I hooked this bad boy. Oh no, he's hooked in the mouth. Okay. It's the third carp of the day. I saw a trout jumping down here earlier, but didn't get him to bite. All right. Fish number three. Doing better with the fish than the mushrooms, but like I said, still early for the mushrooms. Talk to me in two weeks and see how we're doing. All right. I'm going to bait up again and... The sun's going down now, as you can see. Our day's coming to an end here. I'm coming back out tomorrow, though, so maybe I can get some trout tomorrow. Probably won't look for any more mushrooms for a couple more weeks still yet. So I'm going to focus on fishing for a little while. All right, guys. Hopefully I can get another fish before it gets dark. The fish dropped it, like, right. He was, like, right in there when he dropped it. There he is. Nice. He's a fighter. It's another carp. Yeah, he's not even a big one. The one I saw over there was, he was big. It's fish number four though. I will not complain. Well, been sitting here attempting to catch that one last fish like us fishermen always love to do. I've been snacking on some beef jerky and some homemade pepperoni rolls. Not much has been happening, but I think that's all that we have for today. Uh, we came, we saw, we got ourselves some mushrooms, not the ones we were looking for, but Look for us in about two weeks. We're going to come up with some morels and some other good stuff. I'm glad that I got out today. Been itching to go fishing for like two months now. It's either been the weather or been too tired from working all the time. So uh, 
but I'm glad I got it. Got to get out today, had a lot of fun. Look at this. I don't know if you can see him. Blue herring. Yep, you can see him. That was cool. So, nice way to end the day. Uh, we're gonna start heading back to the car here soon. And I'm gonna get back at it tomorrow. So, thanks for watching guys. If you would, if you enjoyed the video, if you took anything from it at all, give me a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. It means the world to me, it really does. Uh, I'm hoping that one day, maybe, maybe, hopefully, it's my dream to just make this my career. You know, I wanna be in the woods every single day, learning as much as I can all the time about all of this. Uh, so, you know, I have a dream to do the, uh, the great, you know, the Appalachian Trail, um, start to finish. That's like, I think it's like 2,000 miles <laughs> of, a, of, of backpacking and hiking through the mountains. You know, that would be like a dream come true for me. Uh, so every, every bit of support I can get means the world to me. Um, so, but anyway, had a good time. Glad to uh, bring you guys along with me. Ashley had a good time. She's really dirty. We had almost 20 ticks on us today, guys. Almost 20 ticks on us. And uh, Pooch is up there. Trixie's in the, uh, in the car taking a nap because she was getting kind of irritated with me. She was getting cold, so we put her sweater on her, and she's okay. She's in the car. So we're going to go start getting ready to head back to the car. Thanks again for watching, guys. This is the Happy Trails Outdoor Experience. I'm Ryan, and that's Ashley, and we will see you next time in the great outdoors.